good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. And when you talk about the colorway, when you uh, talk about anything that uh, regarding safety for him, the blanket is safe. Oh, good. The bed is safe. And right now, his uh, stress level is so out of whack. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is what's. Uh, this is where I start. Um, okay, let me see here. Okay, right here. Diego talks about the fear on the left side of his body. Doesn't know what will happen. Worried. And this has a lot to do with uh, having too many people around or and then having the dogs uh, and make sure that you do not take another dog on. on. Oh, yeah. What was different is, um, uh, what's the name of your other dog? Zena. Zena. The difference is Zena being old wasn't like having another dog, okay. really and truly. Mm -hmm. uh, because she didn't do very much and she was so quiet, quiet in her nature, quiet in her body, yeah. quiet in her, everything about Zena was laid back, mm -hmm. easy, yeah. and on the way. Now what's neat is Bella is got something similar to her. Very easy going, has had no abuse, um, loves to be touched, uh, needs to be around people. Just easy going, easy going, easy going. He needs that frequency because he's not. And I'm calling here Dear Diego because he looks like a little deer. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I'm, I told him his new nickname when I come around is Dear Diego. Okay. Okay. So the fear when I, when I was uh, working him, with him and I picked up that left side of my body mm -hmm. is terribly fear. Remember when I had put my hand... And I barely touched that left ear. Mm -hmm. And that's when he yelped. Mm -hmm. I'm terribly frightened that the left side of my body is going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. Big time. And so um, as I'm talking about Bella with him and the two of them going down, down the stairs, the fact that he, he likes her, he wants to be around her, he wants to see her, but there is a competition. And that's what I did was I went, okay, let's follow this competition. Where's that going to lead us? This is what comes from that. He's having this competition with her, even though he loves her and wants her around. He likes to play with her, likes to be close to her. They don't sleep close, but they stay close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He keeps giving me visions of a chain link fence mm -hmm. and I'm looking uh, around and there's a lot of dogs and a lot of barking. The barking means that somebody has come in and they're paying attention to him. Otherwise he's not getting the attention that he so he gets the any kind of movement means you oh my god oh my god somebody's coming in the back we're going to either get food or we're going to get water or we're going to get something. We're going to get touched. We're going to, and it goes wild. So any kind of movement in here sets that same thing off, the same thing as well as the energy. His nervous system is so shot that most dogs, and I never really paid much attention to that, but, but their nervous system will have their field out about an arm's length around the animal, mm -hmm. so that they could be sleeping and know that somebody is moved, another animal or a person is in the back of them. They would sense that. They would all, all they'd have to do is lift their eye to check and see how close it's coming. For him, it's <gasps> and bark, <gasps> and bark. Mm -hmm. It isn't, I'll lift my head and double check, yeah. or even feel it. Or sense it, I should say. Sensing it before it happens. Sensing just a split second that you're going to reach for that. Sensing information. He doesn't even, uh, and hasn't for a while, 
gone into a very deep, 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 deep sleep. So it's almost like the dog is sleep deprived, stressed out. The vibration that he's been picking up is like a low quiver in your nervous system and throughout the field. So when I was talking earlier about opening the door and you get this blast of heat. So when, a, when you have people here and they start to, they're sitting and, and he can kind of trust they're going to stay there. And then they all of a sudden reach for something and he goes yes. ape. Mm -hmm. It's that door just hit the energy, just hit his body, not his field to give him information. Most animals, they would feel it coming into the field. She would feel it and not have a reaction. She, this dog goes into such a deep sleep, you'd almost think that she's left her body. <laughs> you could have a circus going on, and when she's sleeping, nothing's gonna disturb her. Where he, on the other hand, needs an acupuncture treatment. And I'll tell you, uh, I can give you, I'll get, when I go home, I'll get the name of a vet that's not too far from me, okay. uh, that's reasonable. Okay, good. And, they, and they're really, really good, okay? okay? So, um, once you get his body more trusting and more relaxed, you're gonna see a different dog. Okay, but right now, and, and this is what I want you to do, um, I don't want you to worry about uh, if I that somehow you're hurting him. Somehow he's not going to feel like you love him if you leave him in your room when you have company. Okay. He cannot handle a whole lot of people. Okay. He can't do it. His nervous system can't do it. And he, that's why he's retreating a lot to my bedroom yes. right now. And yes. Yes. So that he was ill. Yeah, what you need to do is just shut the door and then not feel guilty about it. Okay. Okay? And then what he's going to be doing is feeling safe. No one's going to take me away. Nothing's going to happen to me. Nothing's going to get hurt on this left side of my body. Okay. I'm safe. I'm safe. And you want him to be a different dog. You right. want him to be right. happy, yeah. laid back out here with everybody. Yeah. And he can. She can. But he can't. Okay. And don't feel guilty if you put both of them back there. Okay. They'll be completely content. Okay. okay? And then you won't hear them barking. You won't have yeah. any of this other stuff. Okay? Uh, he's so worried about his body being hurt. And I put down here, get him an acupuncture. His nervous system shot. It can't take anymore. Um, barking got out of control okay that this part was with the two of them and so I thought okay I'm gonna shift this I'm gonna use a red gold color because his nervous system is so whacked out right now there's I can't even think of a word that will <coughs> describe how it feels mm -hmm. but I want you to think about how the sunset makes everybody feel calmer mm -hmm. and I'd like to ha have you think about that energy going inside his body mm -hmm. and throughout the house and I want, did one other thing and that was I spun it as if it was a tornado mm -hmm. all the way down through the house down below because right now there's a lot of weird energy I mean, with everybody, mm -hmm. it's almost like everybody, I don't know if it's because of the earthquake, mm -hmm. but everybody is intense. Mm -hmm. There's this unsettled energy that feels, uh, you don't know what's going to happen. That's how it feels. I don't know what's going to happen. So I'd like you to think about that you're looking at a sunset, and then all of a sudden a big wind comes and spins it all through this house, all the way down through her house, down into the ground, and then it's just clearing the whole field. Clearing them, clearing you, clearing everything. Mm -hmm. um, she, she, on the other hand, I write down here, 
She has such the opposite energy, easygoing, doesn't have the fearful stuff, just loves to go, let's go explore. Her attitude is, I have never been over here, let's go here, let's go here, where he's more cautious. He likes to know, how do I get back to here? How do I go from here to here? And once he's got it navigated, then he can relax. And you see that. The minute you go to a new little area, you stop, and then he's got to check back. Now, how, where is in relationship? Where is my house? Where is home? Uh, she talks about being handled a lot. Love. She gives me a picture of this bed. It looks like a little girl's bed, not a big adult's bed. It's got white fluff on it with little holes, like, <laughs> like a real pretty fluffy <laughs> little kids. No fear, no fear of anything, just happy. Her energy will help him trust. Okay, okay now this was my notes, but I get to keep this one. Where's yours? There's yours. Okay. Um... Now, now I spent in the next group of time after finding out from him about why the movement in the house and feeling the, the explosion, his explosion, and how he feels that explosion with energy. That's why I want you to use the energy multidimensionally. As if on the mental plane you're feeling this energy spinning out chaotic thoughts, mm -hmm. okay? Then on the emotional plane, this energy spinning out all the emotional feelings, all the fears. And then on the perceptual, how you see the world, just spinning it out, anything that's contrary to feeling happy. And then on the physical plane, just spinning it out so that he could feel energy that's more positive versus energy that, what the blue blazes is this, and is it gonna hurt me or take me away? Mm -hmm. um, then I gave him both visions of walking together. Now, when we were talking earlier about the scent, the, uh, the side rails going down the steps, one dog on this side and one dog that side, I gave visions of both the dogs going, one on one side, one on one other not too close because she's got an issue about him about the face. And uh, they get too they get too close and then they're going like this yeah. and you're trying to keep the leashes right. straight and it's it's not working. It's <laughs> not working. So in your mind you're gonna get sick and tired when you take a shower, you're seeing the dogs walking this the width of the rail. Okay. Going down the stairs will set the width, okay? Because it still will be in front, and they can see one another, but it gives space. And it's kind of like here. They like their space. Gives them space, but they're still close together, okay. okay? So I saw them as a unit. I want you to see them as a unit. Eating together, space. Sleeping together, space. space yeah. Drinking water, space. Sitting by you, space. Yeah. Everything that you see them doing, giving space, having that space, and then going down the stairs to the landing, stop at the landing. Because when I was working with each of them, the landing is a pivotal point regarding the dog barking. Mm -hmm. They could make it a lot of times to that, especially him, to that landing, and then if the dog was doing its number, that's where you would have to say, Diego, growl, growl. Mm -hmm. So, um, going to that landing, stop, and then tell him, you're so good at growling, okay. you know? And you're gonna practice that yeah. in your head. And the more that you see it as past tense, past tense, they're already doing it. I want you to get to that place. Okay. They've already done it, mm -hmm. going all the way down the steps, just listening. As if you're just remembering that. Mm -hmm. 
and you're not trying to get them to that point. Right. That's your um, power point. When you hit that, they pick it up crystal clear and there's a relaxedness in your body versus trying to strive, oh God, I hope they do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Totally get that. Yeah. yeah, so so you're gonna practice the other. Okay. There's two steps to getting to that place. One is pretending, because pretending is easy. Mm -hmm. So pretend that you guys are all walking down and they're doing it. That's the first level. Then the second level that you want to practice at is you're telling a friend five years later. What or the lady downstairs? What you did to help your dog okay. not bark? Not bark. Yeah. Okay, and you could even do it like six months. Yeah, and, and I have told several people about teaching him how to bark, Pro how, how to mean, growl. Growl. How you growl. know, and, and he's good at it. He, he likes it. Yeah, he, he does, and I praise him, and he's got he's got to do it, but he got to work his. And own. he's teaching her. Yeah, and she's picking up on it too. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah she yeah, is. Yeah. They really are, and so right now what's confusing is. It's a foreign thing for her to growl. Right. And so that's why she barks and then it brings him back to his old behavior of right. barking. Right. And that's where you get that right. thing. That's where practicing going into the shower uh, when you wake up or having your breakfast. Whenever your mind doesn't have to be engaged with something that you have to do, donate a little bit of time to that activity okay. even though you're not doing it. And then let's say Let's say it's three o'clock and you are going to take them out. Then start thinking of it as past tense. Okay. You're right. telling the lady downstairs. Start rethinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You feel how different it is yeah. when they, when you think about past tense yeah. that they've already achieved it. Yeah. That's when they will just yeah. Instead of the dread about oh I got to go down the stairs and I know what's going to happen. Yes. Because that's so powerful, it reinforces what they right. want to do in yeah. the first place. Yeah. And uh, and there's no alternative. Yeah. They don't. They veto your alternative. Yeah. For him, the uh, the little growl, but he's got his own species now. His own species reminding him, "Hey, how come you're not barking?" And that's huge. Yeah. Where he's starting to teach, she is catching on. Yeah. But you have to up your up your ante on yeah. this yeah. one. And it won't take you very long. Yeah. You're going to see a change. Re really, the minute you see them doing it, then all I want you to do is recall that. Okay. And then, and then you're going to move to past tense. Recall that. Go to past tense. Don't try to right. do any of the uh, pretending stuff because you've seen them already. That's okay. more powerful than the pretending. Okay. Pretending is more powerful than trying to fantasize, daydream. And then past tense is more powerful than the than uh, the pretending factor. Okay, okay? it changes up our whole way in which we see mm -hmm. and feel information, and it opens the heart up. Okay. All right, now Bach flowers. Oh my gosh, um, this one's for you. Uh, I want you to order the homeopath mm -hmm. anxiety, so you can go on the internet and get that. Yeah. And then the Bach flowers, Ver, vervain is for high strung, overly enthusiastic, for an animal that's having trouble to stop barking or jumping. Uh, so this, so vervain is really for him. Okay. Chestnut bud for the failure to learn. Okay. And then mimulus for his known fear. He is very frightened that, uh, frightened of people. He doesn't know if and when they're gonna hold on to him, grab him. And so he gets, you'll see his eyes just, they change, like what is your intention? And he's trying to read the person's intention and that's why it's safer for him to go to the he bedroom. Yeah, right, right. Okay, walnut to flow with change. And uh, I have never ever uh, noticed this when I, I double checked with Vervain, because Vervain I've always known is for a high strung animal, but this was what was written underneath it with Vervain. 
it goes with the species. And remember when I said, I, I wonder if it's part of this species mm -hmm. about the high-pitched right. bark. Then I see it goes with the species, high energy, uh, overly enthusiastic, and having a hard time not barking. Goes with the species, this species. Never, I have, I have used for vain and talked to people with, and never, ever, ever noticed that it goes with the species. So um, once he learns and she learns, then it'll start that ability to change, to be able to change that high-pitched bark across the species, they become teachers. Okay. On the inner plane, it happens. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the birds, and they all making a right turn together. Right. Oh, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, walnut will help him with self-protection, flowing with the change, and I put this specifically, when you hit that landing, the old behavior is now that he's got um, Bell, and we're changing both of their understanding that you hear that other dog barking, it means you just listen to the dog barking. Yeah, That's what why I have uh, Walnut in here, to be able to flow with that change. Hear them, feel the other dogs barking, the activity going on, and it just means activity going on the flow with the change. And also, a walnut carries a certain level of self-protection. Right now, he needs that okay. feeling, okay? okay? That's why I wanted the anxiety remedy with that. And with your uh, essential oil, I would definitely look up an essential oil that will help him. Maybe make a room spray with, a, with lavender okay. and walnut. Okay. Um, and because it has some terror in his body, I would look at something that would help him uh, regarding his immune system. Because okay. he's borderline, this amount of stress can lower that yeah. health, okay. okay? And then you may, I wrote down how to mix it up. Okay. Uh, one ounce eyedropper bottle, put four drops of each one into it. And I would put 10 drops of the end anxiety relief the homeopathic then I change this whole thing into a homeopathic versus a bulk flower okay. and you add good quality spring water yes. and then I would circus it okay. at least 300 times that's when you up the energy of it it's more powerful on the energy factor versus just being a bulk flower okay. the difference is bulk flower doesn't hold the frequency a long period of time you'd have to do it in a couple of weeks Circus it again, okay. keep it refrigerated. Okay. Thank you. That's, That's a lot. good to know. So, but you know, I know he's been retreating a lot to my bed. Yeah. Bed, and that's fine. Just let him do what he needs to do. Yeah. And I would shut the door okay. and tell him, you know, so that he doesn't have to worry about somebody coming into that space okay. or get a baby gate or something. Mm -hmm. Just something so he knows that when that's there, no one's going to walk in that room okay. other than you. And that'll make him feel, because he's uneasy. 